studying the overall evolution of the universe, it turns out that when we look out in space, we look back in time. George Smoot measured the cosmic microwave background radiation, the echo of the Big Bang. He's optimistic that science will answer some of the most difficult questions in physics, such as proving the existence of dark matter. Good morning. Martinus Veltman is one of the architects of the standard model of particle physics. He's skeptical that the existence of dark matter will ever be proved. Indeed, he doubts it exists at all. The recent discovery at CERN of the Higgs boson particle is another success for the standard model, but the dark matter problem remains. The laureates met up with three young researchers to discuss these key questions. What we're talking about is the standard model, maybe first, and I just have, from yesterday's discussion about the latest term results, I got the impression that, uh, yeah, Dr. Veltman, you're uh, still skeptical about the standard model of particle physics. And on the other hand, uh, Professor Smoot, you're uh, pretty much in favor of this. Did, did I get this right? Or, uh... See, because he's the architect, and I'm, you know, by the time I came along, I learned it, and, and it's just normal, right? Because mm. it's what your professors taught you, you think that's the, that's the true science. But you're still skeptical on it. On the standard model? model? Oh, no, not at all. No, it's impossible. <laughs> you see, the standard model, ever since its conception, has been fully established through all the years. Everything fitted in nicely. Martinus Feldman made the last big contribution to the standard model because he renormalized the electroweak interaction. So, electroweak theory, this is basically what we call the standard model. He was the architect who sort of put all these building blocks together in order to come up with this theory that describes, if not everything, if not, I guess, like dark matter and stuff, but almost everything. The standard model was established in, in the 70s, but almost, it seemed almost immediately people had, had ideas that it was incomplete. We believe there's much physics beyond the standard model, and so you have this tension between having this beautiful model that's working extraordinarily well and knowing that somewhere behind that is is some additional information that we're hoping yep. hoping to find. Tension, right? tension is, is the exact right word, I think, because you ask about uh, our work in, in my daily work as an astrophysicist. I do my I do my PhD currently in astrophysics. I try to understand how the first galaxies in the universe form and how they then evolved. So I implicitly assume a model of the universe which has dark matter in it, which has dark energy in it. That means probably all the work that I'm doing and all the work all the astrophysicists are doing is probably just rendered incorrect when there is some alternative theory emerging that is probably more suited. What do you think about this? In, in cosmology, gravity is the most important force, although you have these new constituents in the model, like the, like the dark matter, which isn't in the standard model, but you hope will appear at some point. But what you see is you still use Newtonian physics, even when it was replaced by general relativity, because it still has a domain of validity. And so what you're going to expect is whatever dark matter, whatever new theory comes up, it isn't going to radically change how you treat the formation of a galaxy. After the Big Bang, matter coalesced into the stars and galaxies we see today. But to fit the way these galaxies behave with our understanding of gravity, there must be more matter out there than we can see. Astrophysicists call this dark matter, but they don't really know what it is. They've also introduced dark energy to explain why the expansion of our universe appears to be speeding up. Young physicists today must now grapple with these dark mysteries. So dark matter is a subject that's near and dear to my heart as well. I'm a dark matter experimentalist. I'm working on the Lux detector. And so I want to ask, do you guys have opinions? What do you think, what do you think it could be? What? Dark matter. I think it doesn't exist. Huh? Why? Can you, Why? Can you yeah. elaborate? Yeah. Well, I mean, you ask my opinion, since there is no facts on this method. You can have any opinion you want. So are and you I, uh, I consider that one of those things that these astrophysicists introduce in an easy manner every Saturday afternoon. <clears throat> are you a fan of modified gravitational theories then? It or? is an option. There can be two things wrong. Either we don't understand the mass distribution or we have a misunderstanding of the laws of motion. Gravity, that is Newton's law or Einstein's laws. And so on the face of it, I see so many failures of Einstein's theory of gravitation in present-day astrophysics. 
that I tend to think that that's where the problem is. Yes, I am genuinely skeptical, I guess. I often uh, have difficulty accepting this or that or that. I want to see proof of it. And astrophysics, unfortunately, is a business where proof often is lacking. Can you elaborate on those failures a little yeah. bit? My understanding was that well, it didn't I, 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 can I can start off with the simplest thing. Have you ever looked up to the sky? <laughs> and have you ever looked at the galaxy? I just look into computer monitors to see galaxies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now in a galaxy, most galaxies have spiral arms. If the spiral arm is made of stars, it doesn't agree with Newton's equation of motion. Because if you think of planets, the Earth goes around the sun once a year. Pluto, once every 250 years. So you can see that if, the, if they are aligned at some point, it's not going to last very long. In other words, the, the arms of the galaxy, we have first question, is what the astrophysicists call the winding problem, is how come these things are still aligned so far in their existence. The winding problem is a real big problem. And guys who are experts in the winding problem, of which there are some, they find out that whatever they are trying in the nature of understanding that, or mathematically treating it, it doesn't work. And yet, all of them, including Mr. Smooth, they are absolutely convinced. And it has, that's something that they got taught in their early period. I understand in science you have to have both the things you're trying and testing and not hold on them too, too dear and realize there could be alternatives. But he is sort of like, there's no evidence for anything, you know. Why do we need anything new? George Moose thinks that if he comes with an explanation of something, that it is true. I don't. I want to see proof of it elsewhere. It's just the easiest solution to the fact that you don't understand the velocity distribution of matter circling a galaxy. But there's other so evidence. There are so too. many evidence. There's a lot of evidence. On all there's scales, the, yeah. There's the bullet cluster, yeah. there's lensing evidence, yeah. there's... The entire large scale structure, structure of the universe, yeah. Which is no, no, wait a moment. If you now speak about the evidence of dark matter beyond what we are talking here, that is colliding things and lensing and the like, you have also to realize that the thing that explains this straight velocity automatically has to explain all these other phenomena. I don't exactly. know so it's, it's not, not something that you would call proof of dark matter. People have been doing experiments on detecting our dark matter with existing particles, I would say at least for 30 or 40 years, yeah, at least. Well, at I'm this point, I start to wonder, what the hell is going on? Do I have to believe to this church of dark matter? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Okay. Wait, wait. So, you know, you, if you have supersymmetry, you have a natural candidate for dark matter. You, if you have axions, which you need in the, in the standard model, you could potentially make dark matter. There is theoretical places for dark matter. It's just we haven't found it I yet. Do. So, okay, everybody happy. And then, uh, there comes a new measure, and then there comes a new measurement. Ooh. Yeah. And then they patch that up. By something. He's right. Every time there's a deviation, people introduce dark matter and then later dark energy, right? In order to continue to use, you know, Newtonian and Einstein gravity and to be able to do the calculations in a straightforward way. And you still have to test that, that kind of an issue. However, I think we have constraints, even some on the dark energy. Uh, not quite as much, but we do have constraints on the dark matter. Yeah, I don't know about on that. There's one thing that I really shocked me, which is the following. I've, humanity has lived till roughly the year 2000, or maybe a bit beyond, not knowing about dark energy. And hop, dark energy comes about as a result of one experiment among the astrophysicists. Yeah. And at once, three quarters of the matter of this universe is dark energy. Now, can you imagine that? They have been over overlooking three quarters of the energy in the universe. Astrophysics is, in a sense, not like, for instance, particle physics, where you come with a model and then they go very fast up to and including the Higgs. Okay, I disagree. So where is, I where is the Higgs here, here I disagree with you again, because I think we're finally getting to the stage in cosmology. Finally, test. notice the word. No, finally. it's finally, yeah. but that's because it's an evolving science, and that's what's exciting about it. It's just like, think about when the standard model was first forming, how exciting that period was. And then it became real science, because you could calculate. I believe that, that Dr. Feldman will turn out to be wrong. We'll find dark matter 
more likely than we will find a modified gravity, but we'll see, right? I mean, that's why you, if you knew the answer, you wouldn't have to do the experiments and the observations. We don't know, we're gonna go and do it, and we're gonna find out. For cosmology to go forward, we just have to go ahead assuming it's there and measure its properties and keep calculating that way. So do you think that it would be possible cosmologically to prove the existence of, of dark matter, or, or will we have to eventually detect it on Earth? I do believe that it's going to be the combination of really refining and constraining it in, in the universe and seeing its properties, and then also producing it in the lab or detecting it in the lab and measuring its properties and see that they're the same thing. And then, then Tini will be more happy Although he'll still be skeptical I, 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 because I, I, he's a skeptical. I'm unhappy since like 50 years or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's skeptical to start with. You have to understand that. I love Professor Veltman's attitude. I did not agree with everything that he said. I do believe in dark matter. Otherwise, I would be out of a job. But, I mean, people like Professor Veltman play such an important role in physics. You need someone to play devil's advocate, even if there is very strong evidence for a certain theory. You need that person. In the present data, and the present established theory, there is no hint of something beyond the standard model. The Higgs, the, the finding of the Higgs has sort of closed off the last door. For all we know, there's a desert, yeah? nothing. We make a bigger machine, find nothing else, no new particles, nothing. This is what science does. You, you're in chaos when you don't know the, really the right direction, but you still have to make progress in each of the areas, right? So each of the things you guys are doing, you have to make a certain assumption about the background and you go out and do your observations and you see if it agrees and if it doesn't agree, then you have to think about alternatives, right? And you could find something really spectacular like extra dimensions and who knows the implications of things like that. I would be happy to live at CERN, making things, exploring the next energy range, even if I am not given any indication that I'm going to find something. So you're going out into the desert? I'm going down and say, wonderful, right. let's, let's right. go on. It's like Veltman's analogy of being in the desert. I don't know. Who can say if there's dark matter, if there's no dark matter, if it's a wimp, if it's an axion, if it's some kind of bizarre extra dimensional extension of a multi-dimensional particle. I'm just excited to be throwing myself out there to be heading off into the desert to see what I can find. <laughs>